now. I thank God that we study the uh, Habakkuk chapter 2. The title of today's message is The Righteous Will Live by His Faith. Uh, passage is Habakkuk chapter 2, and key verses, key verses are verse 3 and 4. Let's read them uh, uh, together, please. For the revelation waits for a point in time, it speaks of the end, and will not propose. Though it linger, wait for it, it will certainly come and will not delay. See, he is puffed up, his desires are not all right, but the righteous will live by his faith. Uh, we learned from the last from the first lesson that uh, thank you. Uh, from the first lesson, uh, we learned uh, Habakkuk's first questions to God. He asked, How long, O Lord, must I call for help? But you do not listen, or cry out, cry out to you, violence, but you do not save. Why do you make me look at injustice? Why do you tolerate wrong? God answered Habakkuk with his surprising and unbelieving plan that he raised up the Babylonian to punish and judge the Judah, the people of God. Regarding this, Habakkuk asked a second question, saying, why then do you tolerate the treacherous? Why are you silent while the wicked swallow up those more righteous than themselves? Today's passage is God's answer to Habakkuk's this second question. There is a wonderful revelation of God in his answer. The revelation contains not only the falls of Babylon, but also the end of the wicked, the end of the righteous, and the end of the kingdom of this world. Today's passage so reveals what we should seek and how we should live. Look at verse 1. Let's read uh, verse 1 uh, together, please. I will stand at my watch and station myself in my ramparts. I will look to see what he will say to me and what answer I am to give to his complaint. Habakkuk stood at the watch and waited for God's answer. What is God's answer? Look at verse 2. Let's read uh, verse 2 together. Then, please. Then the Lord replied, Write down the revelation and make it plain on tablets, so that a herald may run with it. God commanded him to plainly write down on tablets the revelation that God was going to <clears throat> tell him. Write down the revelation plainly on the tablets. This tells us that the revelation of God is immutable and irreversible. It is significantly important that the herald must rush to proclaim it to the people. God tells Habakkuk about <clears throat> this revelation. Look at verse 3. Um, Brother King 
Could you please read verse three? For the revelation awaits an appointed time. It speaks of the end and will not prove false. Though it linger, wait for it. It will certainly come and will not delay. <clears throat> Thank you. God did not give him a specific date or time when the appointed time means and was. But he said, the revelation awaits an appointed time. And although it is not clear what the end means, <clears throat> but the revelation speaks of the end. And it will not prove force. It will certainly come. It will not delay. Very interesting here. Then what is the revelation of God mm -hmm. is? In this uh, whole book of Habakkuk, we can say it is a revelation of the fall of the Babylon by God's punishment. However, there is interesting thing. The author of the book of Hebrews referred to the revelation as he, he who is coming. By quoting Habakkuk chapter two, verse three. Look at Hebrews chapter 10, verse 37. Let's read uh, together. For, oh, in, for just in just a very little, little while, while, he who is coming will come and will not delay. delay. This means that the revelation is Christ Jesus, who will come again as the judge and the savior. So we can read verse three again. For he awaits his appointed time. He speaks of the end and he will not prove false. Though he lingers, wait for him. He will certainly come and will not delay. <clears throat> also, Bible ends, uh, Jesus, and Jesus promised his disciples that he would come again. And also, the Bible ends with the promise of Jesus in the book of Revelation, saying, Behold, I'm coming soon. My reward is with me, and I will give to everyone according to what he has done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, and the first and the last, and the beginning and the end. He who testifies to those these things saying, says, yes, I'm coming soon. Amen, come Lord Jesus. <clears throat> then what does God reveal through Christ Jesus? The revelation. First, he reveals the righteousness from God. Look at verse 4. Uh, let's read verse 4 together, please. See his thought, uh, his desire are not upright. Here, who is the righteous? Referring to. From human point of view, we think we can categorize someone into some groups. The most righteous person, more righteous person, and less righteous person, and wicked person, a less wicked person, the most wicked person we can compare. Habakkuk also said in his second question that Judah was more righteous than the Babylonians. Do you agree? However, but when looking at 
God's standard of righteousness, what can you say? It is totally different. All of the people have sinned. So they are all unrighteousness, unrighteous beings who have no choice but to be judged by God. All human beings, whether Jews or Babylonian, whether Ukrainian or Russian, whether Chinese or American, are unrighteous, cannot attain the righteousness from God. According to God's standard of righteousness, there is no one righteous, no good person. No one can be saved from God's judgment. All, without exception, are under God's eminent punishment. However, God's righteousness has been revealed and given to us through Christ Jesus. So Romans chapter 1 verse 17 says about the revelation of God's righteousness. Let's read uh, this verse together, please. In the gospel, our righteousness is by faith first the righteous by faith. This righteousness, righteousness from God only come through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. There is no difference. Anyone who believes in Jesus, the righteousness of God, who received God's punishment on our behalf, receive his righteousness because Christ Jesus paid the price for all our sins with his own life for us. Therefore, Jesus is our righteousness from God that was revealed to us. Amen. This revelation is powerful, unchanging, and unfathomable. So God wants anyone to receive and seek his righteousness. Second, the revelation reveals God's judgment. For a little while, the kingdom of this world, like Babylon, tries to trample and destroy the righteousness with her wickedness. But God's final judgment against the kingdom of this world comes without delay. Satan, the ruler of the kingdom of this air, will tempt and persecute the righteous, righteous, but Jesus will come soon as the judge. That appointed time means the end of the Babylon, the king of this world, the end of the wicked, and the end of Satan, the end of death, the end of sin, the judgment of all things. Verses 5 through 19 declare five woes of Babylon's sin. First, the sin of arrogance and greed. Look at verses 5 through 8. Let's read them uh, responsibly. I'll start. Indeed, wine betrays him, he is arrogant and never at rest, because he is as greedy as the grave, and like death is never satisfied. He gathers to himself all the nations and takes captive all the people. 
The Lord of them taunt him with a video to his heart, saying, Go to him who piles up the stolen goods and makes himself wealthy by exposure. How long must this go on? Will not your debtors suddenly arise? Will they not wake up and make you tremble? Then you will become their victim. Because you have plundered many nations, the peoples who are left will plunder you. For you have shed men's blood, you have destroyed men's cities and everyone in them. Their arrogance is endless, and their greed is never satisfied. They take captive all the people to make themselves wealthy. Woe to him who piles up stolen goods and makes himself wealthy by extortion. Second, sin of sins are sin is the sin of taking unjust gain. Verse 9 through 11. Let's read them responsibly. Woe to him who builds his realm by unjust gain, to set his nest on high, to escape the clutches of ruin. You have watched the ruin of many evils, shaming your own house, forbidding your life. The stones of the wall will cry out, the beams of the woodwork will echo it. They committed the sin of taking unjust gain in order to create and defend a magnificent worldly kingdom. The third sin is the sin of bloodshed and crime. Uh, let's read responsibly. What to him who builds a city with bloodshed and establishes a town by crime? That's the Lord Almighty comment that the Hebrew slave is going to cure Fire, the nations exhaust themselves for nothing. Babylon's third sin was the sin of shedding the blood of innocent people. They were ruthless in their violence and harshness. Mm -hmm. Their fourth sin is the sin of seduction, adultery, and violence. Let's read them responsibly. What to him who gives drink to his neighbors, pouring it from the wine skin <clears throat> till they are drunk, so that he can gaze on their naked bodies? You will be filled with shame and instead of glory. Now it is your son. Drink and be forced. Come from the Lord's right hand. is coming around you. This grace will cover your glory. The violence you have done to Lebanon will overwhelm you, and your destruction of animals will terrify you. For you have shed man's blood, you have destroyed the lands and cities and everyone in them. They committed the sin of making the neighbors drunk and exploiting them, committing adultery and making them a spectacle. Their fifth sin is the sin of idolatry. Verse 8 and 19, 18 and 19. Let's read them responsibly. Of what value is an idol? Since a man has carved it, or an image <clears throat> that teaches lies, for he who makes it trust in his own creation, he makes idols that cannot speak. For to oh, him who says, Lord, come right, but like the stones of the copper, can it keep items? It's covered in gold and silver, there's no breath in it. The five sins mentioned above, mentioned here, are the sins of the kingdom of this world, presented, represented by Babylon. The book of Revelation. Chapter 17 and 18 describes very well the sin of the Babylon, the great, the mother of prostitute, and their fall. The revelation mentions three woes of the same sin. I read 
Woe, woe, O great city, O Babylon, city of power, in one hour your doom has come. Woe, woe, O great city, dressed in fine linen, purple and scarlet, and glittering with gold, precious stones, and pearls. In one hour, such great wealth has been brought to ruin. Woe, woe, O great city, where all who had ship on the sea became rich through her wealth. In one hour, she has been brought to ruin. Christ Jesus will certainly come and will judge the kingdom of this world established by violence, injustice, and greed against God. Christ will judge their sin. He will not delay. Then, the third, the revelation reveals how the righteous should live. First, the righteous must wait for him. Wait for his coming. Habakkuk would often go up to the rampart and wait for God's answer. He thought that it would be better for God to quickly judge, destroy the wicked, and for the kingdom of God to come immediately. But God tells him to wait for him. Wait for it. Because he waits, he awaits the appointed time. But he will surely come. Many of the ancestors of faith in the Bible waited for Christ. The Apostle John waited so long for the Lord to come again. All fell asleep while waiting. I pray that we may patiently wait for the Lord, Lord's coming. Second, the righteous will live by his faith. Look at verse four again. Let's read them uh, together. Let's read this together, please. See, he puffs up. He desires not a right, but the righteous will live by his faith. Yes, the proud and the dishonest will not believe, even if the revelation was preached, is preached. They will live according to lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of this life. Then they will face the day of the final judgment. But God says that the righteous will live by his faith. He mentioned earlier, the righteous are not the people without any sin. But those who believe and depend on the righteousness from God through faith in Christ. And those who seek God's righteousness. Like Habakkuk, the righteous will live by his faith, even when the oppression and the terrible judgment are soon to come. Although it seems that he lingers, the righteous will live by his faith in his coming as the judge and the savior. Amen. The righteous will live by faith in waiting for their bridegroom, Jesus, as his pure bride. They don't live according to the pattern of this world. The righteous will live by faith in the coming of the kingdom of God. He will live by faith in obedience to the word of God and by faith participate in the remaining sufferings of Christ. The righteous will preach the word of salvation and the word of judgment rather than blaming others for a difficult time. 
After all, God gave the answers to Habakkuk, who is suffering and complaining about the sin of the world. His situation has not changed and will not change at all. Soon, God's judgment against Judah and then against Babylon will come. And the righteous will go through difficult time in captivity. But when Habakkuk received the word of God's revelation and tried to live by his faith to the end, he found great joy and strength from God, his Savior, and the sovereign Lord alone. The word, the righteous will live by faith, gave him the strength and inner joy for him to wait for Jesus patiently and to live by faith to the end. The Apostle Paul was also greatly influenced and encouraged by this word. Paul quoted this word, Habakkuk's words, verse 3, in Romans chapter 1, 17, saying, In the gospel, a righteousness from God is revealed. A righteousness that is by faith from first to last, just as it, it is written, the righteous will live by faith. In addition, the author of Hebrews also found great comfort and spiritual direction through the word of revelation from God. It also influenced the first century Christian. At the time, the believer went through typical time, persecution, hardship. But the author of Hebrews gave this word of God to them. Let's read uh, them together. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 13 through 38, together, please. We need persuaders so that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what he has promised. For in just a very little while, he who is coming will come and will not delay. For my righteous one will live by faith, and if he shrink back, I will not be pleased with him. But we have not of those who shrink back and are destroyed, but of those who believe and are saved. Fourth, he reveals the glory of God and his kingdom. What will happen then in the last day of judgment? Look at verse 14. Let's read them uh, together. Read, read, uh, read uh, 14 together, please. For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord, and the water covers the sea. At the time of the Lord's final judgment, the knowledge of the God's glory will fill the whole earth, and his kingdom will come. The Isaiah chapter 19 well described this messianic kingdom. Isaiah 11 verse 9 says, They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountains. For the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the earth. Look at verse 20. But the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth be silent before him. Here, God's holy temple is not the temple in Jerusalem but the holy city in heaven, the new Jerusalem. What does it mean that God is in his holy temple? It says that God is the sovereign Lord in heaven and on earth. 
this God will surely judge and save in the appointed time. And after that, he in his holy temple with his people will rule forever and ever. This is described in Revelation chapter 21, verse 1 through 5. I read, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Now the dwelling of God is with man, and he will live with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe their tears, every tears from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain. For the older, old order of things has passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, write this down. For these words are trustworthy and true. Therefore, the whole earth must be silent before him. We must humbly fear God and live by our faith until that time. Then God in his holy temple will give us strength and joy for us so that we can live a holy life by faith even in this simple word so that we can patiently look forward to the day of his second coming in conclusion we learned from today's passage that Christ Jesus will certainly come and judge the sin, sin of this world. At the same time, we also learned that God gave us his righteousness, which is the way of salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. We also learned that the righteous should wait for his second coming and should not fall into temptation because of the simple word, and that the righteous must live by faith from first to last, <clears throat> then we will be saved through our faith, and we will see the glory of God and live with him in his temple forever. Yes. Amen. Now, uh, uh, let me, uh, let's read uh, today's key verses uh, together, uh, please. For the revelation awaits an appointed time. He speaks of the end and will not prove false. Though it linger, wait for it. He will certainly come and will not delay. See, he is puffed up. His desires are not upright. But the righteous will live by his faith. Let me pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, thank you so much for granting us uh, the revelation. Uh, written in the Habakkuk. Thank you, Lord, for granting us our Lord Jesus Christ, the revelation of God. In him, we received your righteousness, so no more condemnation. Thank you, Lord, for granting <laughs> us this grace so that we can live by faith in Christ. Lord, help us that we may participate in Jesus' suffering and 
we may obey your command, your word, and we may be used as your instrument to preach this revelation, the word of salvation and the word of judgment. Thank you, Lord. As a, a pure bride, we may wait for our Lord and his coming. We may not follow the pattern of this corrupted world. We may follow our Lord Jesus Christ to the end. Thank you, Lord, for this word. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen.